we just trained our best performing pizza, steak, and sushi or Food Vision MIDI model throughout this whole course. That is super exciting. All with the power of transfer learning. We got nearly 90% accuracy on the test data set in 13 or so seconds on my collab instance. Your time may vary and your exact numbers may vary, but don't worry too much if they're slightly off. Now let's continue with the evaluation and see if these numbers on a page are really as good as they seem or are they not as good as they seem? They're just numbers on a page that look good. So we're gonna start plotting our model's loss curves. You might've already given this a shot because I issued the challenge in the last video. We evaluate our model by plotting loss curves. Let's create a section here. So we've got a helper function, plot loss curves. We could just copy that in, or we could write some code to download this helperfunctions.py script into our notebook. So let's do that. So I like to work with things programmatically. We will try to import from helper functions. We will import plot loss curves is the function we're after. So that means it will look over here to see if there's a helper functions.py file. This will fail. So print failed. Then we might need accept print failed. Failed the try. There we go. So it didn't, this didn't work. So what we need to do is fill in some code here to download this file into here so that we can import helperfunctions.py or particularly the plot loss curves. So let's write some info here. Info couldn't find helperfunctions.py downloading. Oh, excuse me, downloading. And then we'll go with open. We're gonna use the request library here as well. Helperfunctions.py, we wanna create. So this is write binary as f, f for file. We're going to import the request library here. We don't actually need to do that here, but we're gonna do it anyway, just for completeness. Request equals requests.get. So we want to get the download or the raw version of this. So this is PyTorch Deep Learning, and this is helperfunctions.py, and we wanna copy the link of the raw version. So paste that in there. This needs to be as a string. Wonderful. And then we're going to write it to F, which is this file up here. So it's going to write the contents of this request to helperfunctions.py. Write request.content content and then we can because we've got it now we're going to import the helper functions a plot loss curves sorry plot loss curves function from helper functions.py and this should work plot the loss functions the loss curves of our model so this is the loss curves of our first transfer learning model plot loss curves results Downloading it, beautiful, look at that. So we got helperfunctions.py over here. Now we've got access to all of the functions in here if we wanted to. But look at those loss curves. They are some good looking loss curves. We've got the train loss and the test loss going down and the train accuracy and the test accuracy going up. So do you think if we were to train this for longer, our model's results would improve? Potentially, right? They're heading in the right direction. We want the loss to go down, how wrong our model is, and we want the accuracy to go up. So that could be some extra curriculum for you is to try training this model for longer and see how low the loss goes and see how high the accuracy goes. But also another challenge for you is to, if we look into here, this is section four. We had a look at what should an ideal loss curve look like. So I'm gonna just copy this here and I'm gonna write, what do our loss curves look like in terms of the ideal loss curve? See here for more. So I'm just gonna get rid of this, turn this into markdown. So if we go back, recall here is what the ideal loss curve, the Goldilocks loss curve, train and test loss go down similarly. 
Overfitting is when the train loss is lower than the test loss, and underfitting is when both loss could be lower. So to me, this looks like our model is doing pretty darn well. Our train loss and test loss aren't too dissimilar, and they're both going down quite rapidly. That's what we'd like to see. But if we would go here, how to deal with overfitting, so our train loss is lower than the test loss, one way to improve that is transfer learning, which is what we've done here. We've used pre-trained weights for our own problem. Transfer learning is one of the most powerful techniques to not only prevent overfitting and underfitting. So we've seen that in practice. So if you'd like to read a little bit more on this, we've covered this in a previous video, but now that we've seen some good loss curves, just go back and have a read of this again and see what it jogs in your memory in the terms of the loss curves that we've got here. So we've seen some loss curves, we've seen some numbers on a page, let's keep going, let's keep evaluating our model, but this time we're going to do it qualitatively. Let's make some predictions on images from the test set. In fact, you might wanna try this yourself, is use the train model, we've done this before, and make some predictions on random images from the test set. Give that a go, and I'll see you in the next video. Let's make some predictions with our best performing model.